crazy times call for crazy organizations. I, I purposeful. October the 7th, 1969, a sudden flash fire broke out on board the Lady Delia, a ship under repair on the River Tyne. In the panic and confusion of escape, 12 dockyard workers suffered burns and shock. Four were never to recover. The cause of the catastrophe was a mystery. With hundreds of employees working below deck every day, the repair yard needed an explanation urgently. The investigation was led by a local chemist from the University of Newcastle. When you arrive at the scene of an accident, uh, particularly if it's a serious one and people have been killed, naturally there's a great deal of woe and misery, which is perfectly understandable, uh, and people are in a state of shock. You have to settle for whatever you can find, whatever little clues uh, indicate to you something that might have happened. And gradually you build up a picture from all sorts of odd little bits of evidence, from questioning people and so on, until finally, with a bit of luck, you're able to come to a reasonably firm conclusion. Four o'clock at Tyne Dock Engineering Works saw the end of the regular working day. But on the evening of October the 7th, 1969, a team of workers agreed to stay on for the late shift. Work on an oil rig supply vessel was behind schedule. I remember that night quite well, actually. We were working on the Lady Delia, the rig tender, and we were asked to uh, stay back to finish off the steering gear, the uh, pedestal bearings, which had to drill and fit. During the course of the job, there's quite a few men down in, uh, Corkness, Fitters, and uh, Ancelli workers. We were asked to try and finish the job. So we asked the Ancelli worker, the labor, to go ashore and rig us up a drilling machine and a pipe, a windy pipe, which is compressed there. No smells whatsoever down in that steering flat because all just oily smells, the normal run of the mill engineering smells what you, you get on the ship. Well, we didn't think there was any more risk than normally on a job like that. Uh, didn't think there was any ex exceptional circumstances. The cigarettes were burning funny. Um, we didn't know what was causing it. It was a bit odd for where we were. And we, just, we just didn't know. We were ignorant of the fact of what was going on. I think people are very casual about dangers in the workplace. And not all dangers uh, that people face in the workplace are obvious to them. And then there's the problem that people become over familiar and overconfident with the risks they face and become blasé and take shortcuts. And we carried on for the job and we didn't know, didn't realise what it was. And the next thing what happened was somebody lit another cigarette and that actually touched one of the carpenter's coats. And his coat just went up his back in flames. <laughs> 
everybody tried to put him out, as they tried to put him out, they caught fire. And it was just like a flash fire. And we made an exit out of there, which was only one way in and one way out, which made it very, very difficult. Oh! Get out! Oh, oh. And anybody that was on fire wouldn't stand a chance of getting up the hatch. No chance at all. There was uh, like balls of fire, like what you would see in one of these Star Wars movies, just you know, bursting out all over the place. People were running around all over, and nobody knew exactly what had happened, and it was just a case of panic just to try and save yourself and try and save the other fellas at the same time. I was just happy to get out of there. But unfortunately, a lot of the lads didn't get out. Uh, I was in the vicinity of the ambulance room and there was a plumber's mate came running across with his uh, hair uh, smouldering. Uh, shouting that there had been an explosion on number one dock and to get across there immediately. Uh, I escorted him into the ambulance room. Uh, it's terrible. Smokes. You better run, mate. You better hurry up. There's men trapped down there as well. Yeah. There's an ambulance. Ah, uh, it's five or six yeah. men down there on the trap. Fine. And ran across the dock to see exactly what the trouble was. There was injured men on the deck being attended to by workmates, and one of them had shouted across there were still men in the steering flat. It was smoke belching out of an escape hatch that was set on the after deck. I made an attempt to get down the steering flat, but was sent back by the amount of smoke involved. When we arrived, the compartment was open, which was about three foot by three foot, and there was a slight haze of smoke issuing from the compartment. We had confirmation, of course, there was one person still missing. The fire crews were donning breathing apparatus, and we entered the compartment to search and find for this missing person. Now, once we got into the compartment, which was about six foot down, we located the body pretty quick. Obviously, there's no signs of life. There was slight damage uh, observed on the walls of the compartment, slight scorching of the paintwork. And then we reported back up to the police that we'd recovered the body. There was no damage, hardly any fire damage, but it had been a very quick flash fire which made us think it had been an introduction of some volatile gas into the compartment. That afternoon, I was working on some simple temperature measurements. The experiments had taken longer than I thought, so I was still in the laboratory in the late afternoon. A telephone call came through Ed, from a solicitor to say that there'd been a serious accident on a ship, the Lady Delia, in South Shields, in time dock and would I go down with him uh, to try to find out what had happened. When one gets involved with serious accidents like this, the sooner you can get to the site of the accident, the better the chance is of finding out what happened because as the days go by, all the evidence gets dulled and blurred and people forget things. And I acted then as a combustion expert, finding out just what had happened uh, 
in, in explosions and fires, partly with an intention of, 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 of trying to reduce their frequency. The 1960s were a time when, when a lot of these sorts of things happened. The solicitor rang me and said, if he arrived in a car in about 10 minutes' time, could we go straight down there and investigate? We realised some people had died, though we weren't sure quite how many. I was rather anxious to get onto the ship, but the police officer stopped me, and despite the protestations of the solicitor, we still weren't allowed to get onto the ship. But we were able to talk to people who'd been involved with the accident. We had that good, haven't we? We had that good, haven't we? We didn't know. We had no idea whatsoever what had caused that fire down there. Uh, at the time, I had no idea whatever had caused it. Just assumed that there had been something in in the steering flat that had caused the fire. That was all. We didn't know. We're ignorant of the fact. There's usually been some some fuel or hydrocarbon, you know, petrol, something like that, naphtha perhaps, it, which is obvious has exploded. Uh, so the first thing that we were looking for was, if you like it, some sort of fuel that would have exploded. There was some diesel fuel in the chip. Uh, although no real signs of it having escaped. However, that was the only possible uh, source that we could think of. So we took away uh, samples of the diesel fuel uh, to test them uh, here in my laboratory to see if there was anything funny about it. Our experience with, with diesel fuel is that occasionally it gets contaminated with petrol. Now, petrol is a very volatile uh, fuel and ignites very easily. Whereas diesel fuel, you actually have to warm it up to a temperature uh, of around 80 degrees centigrade before it will burn, before you can light it. That temperature is actually called the flash point. It is something that we can measure. Now, if the diesel fuel has been contaminated with something like petrol, then the flash point is much lower. So, we tested it. In the event, there was nothing wrong with the diesel fuel at all. If anything, the flash point temperature was rather higher than I had expected, you know, above 80 degrees uh, centigrade, which meant it was most unlikely that that could have been the source of the flame. The following day of the accident, um there was meetings held on the premises and the men elected to go home as a mark of respect to the dead men. Injured people who were being brought off the ship at that time weren't just people. Um, they were friends and fellow workmates who we worked with for many years. And it was really dramatic for everyone concerned. Some of us stayed, and that was to assist in the uh, reconstruction, more or less, of the what had occurred and see just what was the actual causation of the accident. And I suppose the first hint that we had of what might have happened was when I discussed with, with some men who had been down in the uh, stern hold where the other men were working uh, with their drills was that one of them uh, had lit a cigarette uh, and he said it burnt in a funny way, it tasted funny, in fact he didn't like it. The implications uh, of sudden fast burning of something like a cigarette are that perhaps Instead of air in the atmosphere, maybe there is some oxygen. Things burn much more quickly in oxygen than they burn in ordinary air. And so we wondered, well, could there possibly have been some oxygen down in the stern hold? Perhaps I should explain, oxygen doesn't have a smell. 
Uh, and if you were in the kind of atmosphere, uh, enclosed atmosphere in, in a ship, you would never notice if the atmosphere had been increased, enriched uh, in oxygen, unless it was nearly pure oxygen, then you might start to notice it. And so we went away to the laboratory and we, and we set up a, a cigarette smoking machine, if you like. We gradually increased the concentration of, of oxygen uh, in the air, which the cigarette was burning in, and the whole combustion got more and more vigorous, just as we'd anticipated. An additional piece of evidence that made us think that this was an oxygen flash fire was the lack of, of carbon, smoke, charring. The kind of thing I normally expect in, in a fire or an explosion is quite a lot of blackening on walls, uh, through doors and that sort of thing. And that was all missing uh, there. So this suggested somehow a clean flame and that meant probably an oxygen flash fire. Almost certain that oxygen was the cause of the fire, the investigators began to look for a possible source. It did not take long to confirm that the gas was on tap throughout the yard. Oxygen is stored in shipyards in a number of ways, but usually we find that there is a bulk tank somewhere in the yard, and then this is vaporised to produce the gas, which is distributed around the yard through fixed pipes. There are a lot of pipes in shipyards, flexible hoses and fixed piping which carry a variety of gases and materials around the yard. Wherever possible, pipes that carry oxygen in shipyards are coloured to distinguish them from other pipes, but this isn't always possible. And in these cases, we rely on different threads and fittings to make sure that the pipes are very different and people can't connect the wrong hose or other equipment to the wrong pipe. If you uh, take as an example a gas cooker, everybody can see the flame burning, but the temperature of that flame is not very hot. By burning the gas in 100% oxygen, uh, we can make the temperature of the flame much hotter, and at the temperatures we're talking about, this will cut through steel and other metals. Well, the air around us, the air I'm breathing at the moment, contains about 20% oxygen uh, and nearly all the rest is nitrogen. Then there are a few special traces of gases. Um, now, that's how normal air is. If we increase the concentration of oxygen a little, not very much, up to 25%, from 20 to 25%, from a fifth to a quarter, then the whole of the oxygen atmosphere becomes absolutely lethal. Uh, and if we light a, light a match or a spark or anything like that, then we'll get a flash fire uh, that zips through the atmosphere in which we're sitting. Well, a great many things are made of the elements carbon and hydrogen. Uh, and nearly everything that's made of carbon and hydrogen burns. Coal is mostly carbon with a little hydrogen, and petrol is 
mostly hydrogen with a little carbon. Uh, but they all contain carbon and hydrogen, yeah, and they're linked together by bonds like this. These C's stand for carbon. These H's are hydrogen. Uh, in fact, this is you know, the basic structure of what we call a hydrocarbon. And clothes are made of hydrocarbons. Indeed, they, they're made from petrochemicals uh, in many cases. Now, they react with oxygen. O is oxygen. They come together in twos. And the oxygen reacts with the hydrogen and the carbon breaking these bonds, that's what causes the fire. You only have to take a flame to a piece of paper and the carbon and hydrogen atoms in the paper react with the oxygen in the air and we get a chemical reaction and that leads to a fire. Now, once you've got the oxygen concentration in the air up to 25%, then you don't even need a flame to start a fire, a spark, a burning fragment from a cigarette. That's quite enough to set the whole thing off. You made some inquiries. There had been some uh, oxyacetylene uh, cutting going on down there, but oh, a couple of days before. Uh, and it was most unlikely that, 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 a, that a pocket of oxygen could have built up down in the stern hold and stayed there for a couple of days. You know, physics would not let that happen. And so again, we were puzzled. We looked around uh, the shipyard just to see what possible sources of oxygen there might be. Uh, and of course, we found that around the docks, they have oxygen piped around in what's called a ring main. So we wondered to ourselves, well, maybe the oxygen from this oxygen ring main has in some way got into the ship. The men that were working in the afterhold were using drills, but compressed air drills. That is, the compressed air made the, the drills rotate, and they were connected up uh, to the compressed air line that went uh, around the dock. Uh, and we wondered, was it possible that a mistake had been made and they had been connected to the oxygen line? But it was explained to us by the management that that was impossible because uh, the fitments had been so arranged with this possible accident in mind or like an accident of this sort that you couldn't connect in the, the compressed air line to the compressed oxygen line. So we started off thinking we perhaps found a reason for the, the oxygen supply and then we were it made uh, doubtful about it. Well, the average ship repairer is a very skilled man. Um, he's versatile. Um, he can improvise. He's learned to do that over the years in the industry. And with this expertise that the particular men have, it is possible, and it is still possible, that in fact it could connect into a main oxygen line. So, we said, who connected it up? And we sent for uh, the young man who had connected the compressed air drills uh, into the compressed air line. And we said to him, which of those lines did you connect uh, the compressed air drills to? And he pointed to the oxygen line. And we said, well, wasn't it difficult? And he said, yes, I, I couldn't get it to fit. So I had to go to the workshop to get an adapter. I came back and it fitted okay. So, you know, very sad that it was possible uh, quite easily to mistakenly connect the compressed air line to the oxygen line. No one was really to blame um, for the accident. Um, one of the reasons or why it happened was that the uh, valves and the pipelines weren't clearly marked. And it was relatively easy for someone to connect a compressed air pipe into uh, an oxygen gas mill. The individuals had up to that time, and especially new employees, received no training or instruction as to the dangers or risks in the use of oxygen at work. People are not alert to the dangers of oxygen because it doesn't smell and people naturally think of oxygen as being the life giver. Uh, we have to breathe oxygen to live and people uh, are not aware of the risks from oxygen in the workplace. 
The coroner's verdict was accidental death, but he made three recommendations. Um, the first recommendation that all pipes and fittings and valves should be clearly marked as to what is contained within that pipe. The second was that it should be made more difficult for anyone to connect into an oxygen main accidentally. And that workers should be made aware of the dangers um, of oxygen enrichment. In this yard, we learned it the hard way. It was a tragic accident for us, knowing these people personally. Uh, attending the funerals of the four dead men uh, was a very traumatic, had a very traumatic effect on me personally. Uh, men that I had worked with for a number of years, and in a matter of days, because of an accident like that, they were uh, they were dead and were attending a funeral, and it took me a long time to get over that. Unfortunately, the incident on the Lady Adelia was not a freak incident. Uh, there have been many fires on ships under construction or under repair on this river and all around the United Kingdom. The old Tynock Engineering Company closed down in 1980 and a year later the new company opened and on the opening of the new company new safety systems came into operation. Well, at the present time we do um, regular safety inspections and tests and we've introduced new measures um, which have reduced the risk of this reoccurring. Oxygen itself doesn't give off any smell. So what we've done, we've added uh, bio uh, machinery extension agent, dimethyl sulfide, into the system which gives off a pungent smell. If a leak occurred anywhere in a combined space or even anywhere, you would, this pungent smell, you would be quickly be able to detect that there was in fact a leak. Well, people now are more aware than what they were 20 years ago um, because of the actions that have occurred in the last 20 years. But still, uh, oxygen isn't given the respect that it should have. 